So today we're getting into part one of the three part series on the sculpting and drapery tutorial. So I'm going to show you how I sculpt clothing. It's a challenge for a lot of artists, but today we're going to be covering how you get that flowing effect. Um, we're basically sculpting a dress out of solid clay and we're going to make it look like it's flowing in the wind. First, if you haven't already, you can click this button right down here in the right hand corner to subscribe to my channel if you want to stay updated with these tutorials and videos that cover sculpting and other forms of art. But let's get right to it. I'll show you where we began on this sculpture. You can only see the head right now, but I'll give you a glimpse here of the finished product on the right side. Well, not quite finished, but getting closer there. So back to the armature. Um, it took quite a while to pile on all that clay. You just gotta work at it, and you can see here that it really starts to shape up. Now throughout this video, you're gonna see how important it is to use good reference when sculpting. You may have noticed that the wrinkles in the dress are kind of flowing in the form of vertical lines. Now that we have enough clay in our sculpture, we need to imagine these lines on it. You may even want to mark them out on the surface of the clay with a knife or some other tool. You'll see how I study the fabric here because it sort of bows in on both sides, leaving these cavities. Now this is pretty difficult to create here because we need to keep in mind that we're going to be molding the piece when we're finished. I'll explain more on that later. So we need to keep in mind that we want this dress to look like it's being hit by a light breeze. To get this effect, you need to make a decision on where the wind will be coming from. I decided the wind would hit her right here, and uh, it was kind of tricky because the wind will split that fabric, so to speak. So the fabric will be pushed to one side, and then the rest of it will be pushed to the other. I could alternatively describe that as parting the fabric. Sculpting that contact point on her shin was the most difficult. I had to rework that a little bit. So remember we're going to be having some excess fabric on the other side of her where the wind is sort of coming off the fabric. This creates sort of a flip and I got to curve that at the bottom and then add a little bit of extra material to give that effect. This is some very tedious work. You'll see the tops of these ridges again on the clothes, how uh, they need to be really smooth. Now that's something that's really tricky to do, and right now our sculpture looks very rough. So I have quite a bit of sculpting to do to smooth that out. So next I'm going to do something that's a little bit different in method. We're going to find a way to give the effect of knees and legs beneath the dress. You can see here how I'm building up some extra clay there on the right side. Well, it's her left side. And uh, we just want to give a slight hint of a bump coming out that the fabric is flowing off of. Now, another thing I did here was I started from the bottom looking at the side of the sculpture and then sort of measured upwards. And uh, we need to use a person for reference while we're sculpting this. So you go back to those measurements you find out how long the legs are and uh, how many inches or whatever you're measuring in. It is up to that knee. I kind of fast forwarded to a point where most of the dress is smoothed out here so we can really see it start to shape up and the whole piece is coming together. And we want to continue to remember that the fabric is hanging off those legs. And then as the wind hits it, you know, you want it to give that feeling that it's lightweight. When I'm creating anything, I tend to get in the zone, so it's always a good idea to step back from the piece and take a look at it from different angles. Now that all that fabric is being pushed against the front, we need to talk about the backside. I had to imagine her legs and glutes there so I could see where the fabric could be hanging off. Now, I don't know if my drawing makes her look like a Victoria's Secret model, but it does give us an idea of the uh, legs underneath. The goal is to find those contact points on her right glute and on the top of her left glute where the fabric will be creating a little bit of a wrinkle as it flows off that. And keep in mind that wind is coming in at an angle, 
So all that fabric will be collecting, so to speak, at the bottom near her ankle. You need to be prepared to invest a lot of time in smoothing out a piece like this. Throughout the whole project, I really had to take a step back and just touch things up, you know, to get that nice pattern so everything seems like it's flowing in sync. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because next week I'm going to be uploading my video on how to do those more detailed wrinkles and we're going to be focusing on the waistline because she will be wearing a belt and that belt will be binding the uh, fabric here and this is something that's even trickier to do when sculpting drapery. But thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys next week.